Hey guys, so today we're going to be having a look at the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation. This came out a while ago, I believe it was in 2018 that it came out. I got this recently for $5.99 at Boots and it says, oh, this is in Classic Beige, which is a medium to tan range foundation. Um, it's one flow ounce or 30 mil. It's cruelty free and it's also vegan with a 12 month shelf life. The back says goodbye photo flashback help eliminate white particle reflection. It also says that it's been tested under seven light conditions with top smartphone models with and without flash. And the part that says it helps eliminate white particle reflection is like two little asterisks. And it, the two asterisks at the bottom, which is coinciding with that, says that it's based on a panel test it's based on panel test results. And if I want you to see full details, I can go to their website, fine. So I have been testing out this foundation for the past few days. So this is more of a review rather than a first impression. I'm going to be using my Revolution Pro Blur Stick. I'm having to use my little spatula because I am literally running out. I'm getting every little bit that's in between, like I'm going hard. The money that I spent on this primer, like it's all gonna go on my face, okay? And I feel no way about it. Now, those of you who watch me, you know that I do like to be able to mix and match my primers and foundations. Like I feel like I should be able to pick up a foundation and use it with whichever primer I'm currently using. But at the same time, I'm not going to be feeling a way if you make a foundation and you have a primer that matches like if that's the case that's the case that's cool but I do like to still be able to use my primer along with a different foundation if I want to or use my foundation with a different primer if I want to right so now you are zoomed in just a little bit now something I must remember to do is to shake it. That's something that I tend to forget to do with my foundation sometimes, especially when I first get it, it's like, it's been sitting there on, on the display. Shake it, Sinead, okay, shake it. I did manage to have a look at some of their highlighters and was there concealer? I can't remember if there was a concealer, um, but I do remember having a look at their highlighters which were blinding, but I was most taken aback by the foundation so as you can see here it's, it has like a little paddle and it comes in a jar which just looks like this so the only thing that I would say about this is you're probably going to find that getting the last remaining bits out is going to be a struggle unless I guess you turn it upside down and make it sit upside down for a couple of days like when you're coming to the end of it so you can just swipe the foundation on. Now, this one was the closest to my skin tone. I'm not too sure how many different shades they carry, but I kind of found that there was, this is classic beige, there was one which was a little bit lighter than this, and that one just tended to look like ash on me. But then this one, as I've taken it home, I've kind of realized that it's a little bit on the warmer side. I kind of wish that there was one in between, the one which was a little bit too ashy and this one. But here we are. Now I'm just going to blend this in. Now, one thing I will say is that it doesn't really say on the bottle what kind of finish it's supposed to be, but from wearing it myself, I find that it's a very natural matte foundation. So in the areas where you may have a little bit of natural reflection, you'll still get a little bit of that natural reflection. So I guess what I'm trying to say is it doesn't dry down like completely, completely matte, but it's still quite matte. And it's like, as I look at this, I kind of feel like I need another layer. So I need to build it up because there's certain areas like there, there. Oh, I don't even blend that in properly. Like it just needs a little bit more help. So 
So what I have been doing is I have been, uh, well, I've not been using any um, powder on my face when I've been using this. But what I have found is that like halfway through the day, like around my nose and on my forehead, I'll get a bit of shine. But <clears throat> I kind of feel like if I was to use powder, I'm gonna look really dry. But today I'm going to use powder because I would like to see if it holds up any better the foundation itself it is matte anyway i'm gonna go do the rest of my makeup and i'll be right back all right so i've done my concealer now i've gotten some powder but be careful because i'm balancing this powder on my knee and i'm just gonna go in on like my cheeks and just around the face i'm just gonna try to lightly dust it And just as I said, I knew that I was going to look really, really dry. I feel like I look super dry, like I look real dry. Hopefully throughout the day, my own natural oils will come through a little bit because this looks crazy dry. Okay, so I'm gonna go about my day. I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna tell you what's going on. I'm gonna let you see what's going on. Okay, so it's been about 10 hours and I will say that generally it has held up really, really well. There's a little bit of shine around my nose area, but as for like my T-zone, it's very, very minimal. And as you know, I haven't blotted at all either. All of my lipstick has rubbed off, but generally it's held up really, really well. And I'm kind of glad that I decided to powder my face today rather than just leave it because the amount of shine that I've gotten today is nowhere near is nowhere near the amount of shine that I've had when I have not put any powder on. So I would definitely advise just use a bit of powder. If you are somebody who's into setting spray, I would definitely say like powder your face, do the rest of your makeup and then put on some setting spray because after you put the powder on, it does look quite dry for a few hours until your face starts to kind of like you know, let its own natural oils come through. So, and that's because this foundation is a very mattifying foundation. So you're gonna find that the foundation along with powder is going to make it look super dry. So if you're a setting spray person, definitely use a setting spray with this so that it just brings the face together rather than making it look super dry. So the pros and cons of this foundation is that pro, it's $5.99. Um, it's very mattifying. So exactly what it says it, it is. It's also vegan, cruelty free. On top of that, I feel like it does hold up throughout the day. But a con of it is um, you do get a bit of shine like a little way down the road. Also, I feel like it kind of accentuates my pimples a little bit because I've got a few little pimples here and there. Um, also, what I was finding is that the oxidization a little bit. So when I had first color matched myself, it seemed perfect, but then once it oxidized like on my face, it just seemed a little bit too warm. So maybe it would be great if there was like a step in between what I have because the other one, that was a step down was a little bit ashy and also the con again is the fact that if you was to use a powder on top of this foundation you're going to find that it is going to look really dry and um, so somebody who want who doesn't want to look dry but wants to look matte you're gonna have to decide like what am i gonna do am i gonna use the fact am i gonna use the powder am i not or maybe what you could do is you could block during the day or carry a powder with you like a loose powder or compact powder whatever and just touch up during the day i hate having to do that i'd prefer to just blot with some tissue paper or I don't really use like actual blotting paper, but if you were somebody who had blotting paper, then go ham. But aside from that, I really, really like this foundation. I do think it's a little bit on the thin side when you first put it on. I do think that if you want to have like a full coverage beat, you're not gonna get that with this. You're gonna have to end up building it up. Like if I was, if I wanted it to be full coverage, I would probably have to put on three layers and that's a lot of makeup. So what I did is I put on like a liberal amount and then what I would normally do is then get my stick foundation and just go over the areas that need that extra coverage because this on its own was just not gonna give me that coverage. So it's, to me, it's like a light to medium buildable kind of coverage situation. So just be aware of that also. I do like how it looks 
like on camera um, I did do um, a TikTok earlier on today and I loved the way that it looked on the TikTok oh my god it looks so so beautiful so it does look really really nice and it is supposed to be a camera friendly foundation so that is that so so those are my thoughts and feelings on the wet and wild photo focus foundation tell me what you think have you already purchased this if you have how do you get on with it do you like it do you not like it is it your everyday kick is it not like as i said i've been wearing this for the past few days simply because i want to review it properly will i continue to wear it i'll probably mix it with some other foundations but i don't think i'll be wearing it every single day um, whether or not i would repurchase this i'm not 100 sure at the moment but i really do like the price point of 5.99 um so will you be buying this have you already purchased it what do you think do you think it looks good on me do you think it held up and if you like this video give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you in the next one